Hi, I'm Alice Cable with the American Precision Museum and welcome to the Letters and Stitches Temporary Exhibit. We're so excited to share these sewing machines and typewriters with you that have been in storage for a little while. So let me show you around about some cool machines. So this is the Remington Model 2 from 1878. This typewriter actually has wooden keys and metal mechanism. It's interesting that the cue broke over here and you can see that it's got a wooden base. What's cool about this typewriter is the Remington Model Number 1 was essentially the world's first commercial typewriter. Uh, it was otherwise known as the Scholes and Glidden model. And that's the historic one that had the first QWERTY key set, the keyboard layout, because they did not want the keys to jam by people pressing them too rapidly. What's interesting here is you can see that it comes up from underneath and it's typing under the roll so that the person that's typing wouldn't actually be able to read what they wrote. So I was wondering whether someone would do a hunt and peck on a keyboard like this or whether they would have used the home row back in 1878. The original Scholes and Glidden patent looks a lot like a piano, so I believe it would have been the home row at that stage. So this Underwood 77 is 90 years old almost. Uh, it's called a noiseless. It's not actually noiseless. It does make a sound, but it's quieter than others of the time. See, it's more of a ka-chunk than a tap. So we have about 100 typewriters in our collection. The ones that we brought out are either beautiful, like the Underwood you just saw, or have really unique features. This Oliver calls itself the standard visible writer because it was one of the first models where you could see what you were typing. And if you look at the mechanism, it's um, known as two towers that come down. And see how that comes down in a loop. And if I do capital, by the way, if you come to the museum, you don't get to touch them, but I get to touch them and that's why we're doing a video. The other interesting thing is in order to find out what is special and unique about these typewriters, some of the time we had to go to advertisements to find out what their claims to fame were. So the Oliver, because you could see what you were typing, you could make art like this. And this is another ad from Oliver about all the different things you could do now that you can see what you wrote. So this Yoast typewriter from 1910, 1920s era, First stands out because it's got three rows of keys. It's actually the uppercase is here and the lowercase is here. And the second thing that's interesting about it, and I've got the platen lifted up to see this, is once again, it it's an upstrike where the key comes from underneath and it only goes into the square. So its advertisement claims that it can't get out of alignment because if it doesn't type into that square, you don't get anything. Once again, you're typing underneath because this predates the Oliver. So you have to wait to see what you've written. Now on the other hand, this is a Blickensdurfer from the 1890s. It's a number five. And what's special about the Blick is that it's, as you can see, it's really small and lightweight. And that was on purpose. This is a portable typewriter for someone like a traveling salesman or a reporter or even, as you can see in this ad, a naval officer who's on a ship. So he's able to bring his typewriter right with him. Uh, it's also got an interesting key layout. The inventor of this typewriter, the Blickensdurfer, calculated that instead of QWERTY, which is made to slow you down so you don't jam the keys, use these letters, D-H-I-A-T-E-N-S-O-R, most often, so they should all be next to each other so that you can be more efficient. So historically, after manufacturers had been making firearms, the Civil War was over and the Crimean War was over, there wasn't so much need for firearms anymore, but they still had these machines to make these parts. Uh, consumer products then became very popular and useful. So typewriters and sewing machines. Here we have a Singer from 1910, actually. This is a pop-up where the Singer the actual sewing machine lives underneath. You can see that it has a treadle, and, as well as a lot of beautiful little cabinets. And here's how we would make it move. So some of the things we invite you to think about as you look at these machines 
is are they ornamented? Who's the audience? Is this for home use, like the singer, so it's very beautiful, or is it an industrial use, or is it so early that they hadn't figured out the ornamentation yet? This is a sewing machine from 1859, which is fairly early in the world of sewing machines. Um, it would have been powered by a treadle, but we've just got it here on the tabletop. But it doesn't have the same kind of filigree that the singer over there does. By the way, this is by Wheeler and Wilson. So ascending chronologically, we're, these are a little bit younger of a machine. We've got a little bit more filigree and ornamentation. But then we don't because this one is an industrial use machine. And then we've got another Wheeler and Wilson with beautiful ornamentation and painting on it. So here we have the Hammond Multiplex number 12. And the reason it's called the Multiplex and it's got this little globe on there is the claim to fame is that you could swap out the typeset for another language. So this is for people that might be typing in French or whatever. And its mechanism is another interesting one. Obviously, it's semicircular, but as I'm typing here, this is going from side to side, and the letters are up top. So here we have the punch tape typewriter and reader, my flexo writer. And when I say punch tape typewriter and punch tape reader, it's also a regular typewriter. It also reads magnetic ink. And it's got the punch tape system over here. So this is from 1950s to 1965. Uh, it, basically, all it needs is a screen instead of paper here, and you've got yourself a computer. So here we have an, an adding machine from the 1900s. What's interesting about this is it doesn't just add. It's got signals here for uh, multiply, divide, add, and subtract. And you move this lever to make it happen. The company that makes this can trace its lineage back to 1625 in Japan. And they are still in business today. It's Tamaya Corporation. So the last small machine we want to show you is not a typewriter and not a sewing machine. It's another adding machine where I'm going to pull down to subtract and push up to add. And then I'm going to clear it. Just think, in a computer, you've got usually your printer built in and your keyboard and your adding machine. If you've got it hooked up to other things, you might be able to even have a sewing machine attached to it. So all of this happened in just over 100 years. Isn't it crazy how technology changes? So thanks for watching. We do these temporary shows every couple of months because we like to get things out of stores so you can see them. And we hope to see you at the American Precision Museum. You can follow us online for information and updates about the next exciting show. And we'll be here all winter if you want to come visit.